believe it was 30 years ago when we introduced our uh, first vehicle, the fabled uh, uh, XL, back in 1986. And in February of next year, we actually were incorporated in 85, and in February of next year, we sold our, uh, it will be the 30th year of selling our first vehicle. So here we are now, 30 years later, 13 different models. And we're here to talk about our, we've had 23 product launches since then. Many of you have been at them. Tony, you've probably been at all of them, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, here we are now, though. We have uh, 13 different models. We're in about 64% of the industry segment, so we've come a long way in a uh, relatively short period of time. So our, our sales uh, history is uh, pretty consistently strong. We've had a few hiccups along the way. The low point was in 98 when we got to about 100,000 units and seriously thought about maybe this wasn't the right market for Hyundai to be in and then America's Best Warranty changed all of that right up to today where we will exceed um, 750,000 sales this year. So over the course of the last 30 years, we've quadrupled our, our business. Um, and one of the things we're here to talk about really is if you look at these last couple of years, that curve has definitely flattened out. A lot of that flattening has to do with, with mix and we all know about the drug business. So we're here to talk about Tucson and that's why that is such a critical launch for us and a critical product for us. So in terms of uh, critical success factors for our growth, growth you can't get around uh, commitment to vehicle quality. Um, more so than in most other brands in this market, it's really important for us to have a third party accreditation. So when JD Powers comes out and says on their initial quality uh, study that in terms of things gone wrong with vehicles, Hyundai is ranked number four in the industry. It's really important for us to lend credibility to our brand. We actually won um, two different awards, one for Accent and Basic Small and one for Tucson, which is tremendous. It adds uh, a great platform for us to build on this new Tucson launch. So very, very important in terms of the uh, uh, external view of our quality. We're amongst, probably more important than anything is the fact that the Koreans with us and, and Kia combined are now recognized as industry leaders in quality surpassing uh, the Japanese and surpassing um, the uh, Germans. Uh, another critical success factor for us is the uh, strength of our brand. We have uh, been very frustrated over the years that the perception of our brand is uh, widely, wildly different than the reality of our brand. It's been frustrating to us. So it's really important for us to build the brand. One way to build the brand is through the obvious marketing metrics like consideration, awareness, familiarity, opinion, and we've made great progress in those areas. Another way to look at it, not, not one that's often um, thought of, um, there's a company called Interbrand that does a global study and they do it every year and they, and they monetize the value of brands. And the Hyundai brand since 2011, the, the, the monetized value of our brand has grown about 20% a year to the point where right now we're at valued at $10.4 billion. And of all the brands in all the industries, um, we're 40 out of 40th out of the top 100, which is great. Surprisingly, we are seventh among automotive brands and bigger than such names as Nissan and Chevrolet. So again, very important for us to have third party accreditation that the brand is real, the brand is legitimate, the brand is viable, very, very important. So I've talked about this before, I think I first started talking about it in Detroit, this whole idea of the industry is really about a tale of two cities. Overall, um, our forecast for this year is about 17 million total vehicles, about 14 million retail vehicles, that'll be up about 3.5% on a year-over-year -year basis. All pretty solid, all pretty robust, but it is a tale of two cities. The car business right now, through the first six months of the year, is down about 4%. The truck business is up almost 11%. So all the growth, 100% of the growth, is in the truck market. And we sell 80% passenger vehicles. The industry sells 56% truck segment vehicles. So we're swimming upstream a little bit there. But even, even more importantly is within CUVs. And the CUV, if you just look at crossovers, all the different segments, they're up about 11%. And if you look at our combined crossover sales, they're down almost 15% through the first six months of this year because we just don't have the capacity to keep up with the growth. So that's why this is such an important vehicle for us and this is such an important launch for us. So everybody knows that crossovers 
are the hot thing in the market right now. Everybody knows that one in every three vehicles sold is either a CUV or an SUV. What people don't know, generally speaking, is that Hyundai already has a great family of crossovers, you know, starting with the uh, Tucson, the new Tucson at the entry level uh, part of the segment, going through Santa Fe Sport all the way up to Santa Fe. We have everything a, cr a crossover uh, consumer may want, and it's differentiated, very, very logical stepping stone between price and payment and configuration and all those types of things. We have a great family of vehicles right now. Very logical steps you'll see between the Tucson, you go another eight and a half inches and you got the Santa Fe Sport, you go another eight and a half inches, you got the Santa Fe. So, so logical in terms of interior patch and package, logical in terms of exterior size, logical in terms of price and payment and value. So a really good family of SUVs. So we've got Tucson, which really takes care of what we call pre-family, which is younger couples, singles, no kids, and really they want a stylish vehicle, and they want it to support their active lifestyle, and really the most important purchase considerations are all about value and price. So there you have your, your Tucson buyer. Then you've got your core family buyer. They're in the middle of act their active family period, their peak years of hauling kids and equipment all around. They need three rows, they need the roominess and, and the quality and the reliability and the durability, and that's where we have Santa Fe for you. And then we've got trailing family, grown kids, empty nesters, more mature families. They have less need to haul people. They don't want to compromise on a lot of things either. You've got the Santa Fe Sport there. So we've got a little bit of something for everybody in our, in our crossover family. So specifically, Tucson, if you look at the last five years, we've averaged, the blue bars, we've averaged about 45,000 sales over the last five years. A little bit up here, a little bit down there, but on average about 45,000 units with, with the second generation Tucson. Unfortunately, the segment has grown from about 940,000 units to about 1.4 million units over the same period of time. So we obviously have lost ground there. Our market share has gone from 4.5% in 2011 down to 2.5% in, in estimated in 2015. And that's really, um, obviously, what's leading to that relative flattening of our growth curve is what's happening in these segments here. So if you look at 2015, where we get the benefit of a half a year of this great new product you're going to be driving today, you're going to see about a 25% lift in our volume just based on the second half of this year. By the time you get to next year, we got a full year of production, we get up to 90,000 units, 90,000 units gets us about a 6% market share. So great growth, very important, you know, from a, both a dealer and a OEM perspective. The growth is here, the margin is here, the market is here. So this is terrifically important for us. We're very proud of the vehicle. Thanks very much. Enjoy your day today.